Elizabeth Loftus is a researcher in Stanford University. Her focus is specifically on false memory. In her research paper, you can see how easy for other people to alter, delete, or even add memory into our brain. And some of other her research even show that it's not even easy for other people to mess with our memory. Sometimes we even get like ourselves mess with our own memories. Just like last time when you left the house, you start recalling, did I shut the stove? And the more you think about it, the more you realize you have a two memory is coexisting. One memory is about you shutting the stove and one memory is about you didn't. It, it almost feels like there's a parallel universe is happening in your head. The reason why she's so deeply interested in false memory is not only because the stove is shut or no, it's more about a lot of people actually lose their life caused by false memory. And those things even happen in court in the name of justice. One of the cases that influenced her the most is actually about a man named Steve Titus. One night after a romantic dinner with a fiance, Steve is driving her back home. On the way, they get stopped by the police and the police ask to take a picture of Steve Titus. The reason for it is because there is a sexual violent case is happening in town and the car that woman was riding on look exactly like Steve's. When police is presenting to the victim, the woman who got violated, multiple picture, she pointed at Steve Tyler say, hmm, he kind of look alike. But the dramatic turning point happened after a couple weeks when the court actually started suing Steve. The woman stand up in the court, pointing at the face of Steve Tyler, say, that is the man, that is the man who violated me. And as you can imagine, all the juries and the judge are announced that you are criminal, you deserve to put in the jails. Steve absolutely lose his patience and trust to the legal system. He actually hire an investigation journalist to help him figure out the truth. And the plot, just like a movie, the journalist actually find who did all of those. And the true criminal declare that, yeah, I did that to that woman. When the judge received the news, he immediately set free of Steve. But at the moment, Steve is already lost everything. Money, his fiance, and the job. When he starts sued the whole legal system, and the people put him into all this suffered, something dramatic happened. Bef the night before the court started to asking all those legal system to pay back Steve's losses, Steve actually passed away by heart attack. When medical people come by, they check on Steve and they conclude that the heart attack happened because chronic high pressure. And you may think Steve cases is not that common, but reality is over 300 criminal Elizabeth investigated and later on they be proved innocent due to like DNA and, and other sort. Three fourths of them get misjudged because of false memory of the victim. The more she looked into false memory, she more realized this matter is actually related to everybody because every false memory have a repercussion. Just like imagine if you have a false memory get bitten by an animal. After that, every time you see any animal like a dog or cat, you will have a fear inside of you. And that is actually observed even in human. In education, there's a one very research finding is we suggest teachers not to say anything bribery to students. Of course, bribery here is not mean money. You know, you give money to students to ask them to study good. Is you try to reward students, said, oh, I will buy you this bike when you hit this score. I will bring you to vacation if you hit this score. This kind of sentence will cause students to have a lower motivation because deep down you are hinting the student that study is something terrible, need to be reward and compensated. So how does other people hinting or uh, suggesting or try to inject memory into you happen and why we're so vulnerable for other people to change our thinking and memories. The answer is very easy. Most people believe 
our brain and our eye work like a camera. We saw something and is storage and record in our brain. But reality is, our brain don't really work in that way. Our brain can only record a piece of information of what happened right now. And then later on, when you try to recall, they need to piece all these little pieces together like a puzzle. But sometimes our brain cannot process so much information. So there will be a loss of empty space on the puzzle. But what does your brain do when there is a missing piece? They literally just make things up. To show that, that our brain make things up, Elizabeth actually conduct an experiment. They gather a group of candidates to the laboratory and ask their experience when they was younger, that you missing in the mall, and some elderly male help you to reunion with your family. And Elizabeth makes sure to have a communication with the family that never happened to that person. But of course, Elizabeth tell those candidates, Oh, listen, I talked to your parents and your parents tell me that happened before. So please write it down more detail about that event. If you don't remember, just write, I don't know. About 25% of the candidate actually writing down, oh, I remember, I remember how scared I was. But the truth are, that never happened. You ask them to recall something that never happened. So what they do, they make things up. And that is actually proven by a loss of colleague of Elizabeth. They can inject any sort of memory, include in Italy, there's a research paper, they can inject a memory of people saw someone get possessed by a demon. And the, half of the people actually recall that. And that's why sometimes when we watch like a cult movie or brainwash movie, you wonder why people believe in such a bizarre thing. And I think the answer is somewhat related to false memory. And the scary thing not just stop there. In Elizabeth's experiment, only 25% of people have a false memory. Elizabeth found that when people are under vulnerable situation, like pressure, their false memory is almost guaranteed. The observer this time is actually Navy SEAL in America. They are specially trained people to take high pressure they have to face very harsh investigation if they get caught by some terrorist group. In the simulated investigations, after the high pressure situation, almost every Navy SEAL don't even remember who done this brutal thing to him. And I even have this personal experience can prove that. I remember I was in freshman in college and then when four of us go into Chinatown to have some food at 2 a.m., the way back to university, we saw a man was harassing another woman. Uh, we have zero clue what happened. And uh, the guy claimed that he had a knife, but we do want to help the girl to escape from this dangerous situation. After we report to the police, that's when false memory kick in. Four people have a four different claim. Some people remember the guy is bald, but I remember the guy have a loss of hair. One of the girls said, the guy have a silver clothes, but I clearly remember the guy have a like a, a green color jacket. That's why when I'm reading the research paper, I actually have a cold sweat to remember those memories. In the same time, because the research paper talk about people under a vulnerable situation, it's easy to get manipulated on their memory. Elizabeth actually have a loss of hate from his colleague. Because Elizabeth, when she deep dive into vulnerable group of people, they actually find out a group of people who easily to be add a false memory is actually the therapy patients. One of the branches of therapy is actually called repressed memory therapy. They taking the lead of Freud. They believe that the reason why I'm depressed right now is because I have traumatic experience. So and I don't even remember those traumatic experiences because of my defense mechanism. So if I can recall that piece of memory, my depression will run away. Even then, the purpose is pretty good. But the reality is when they walk in with one issue and they walk out with another set of issues. For example, this woman walking into the office, I try to solve the, uh, a terrible argument between husband and wife. But she actually walk out. The clinic believed that she have an abortion and sexual abuse by her parents. 
But later on, when she sued the parents, and they bring this to the court, after the medical diagnosis, she never have abortion. And so many patients walk into this kind of clinic, and the walk out believe that they was actually abused by parents, but they never happened. And of course, I have a, a zero uh, information about that specific situation. This is all claimed by Dr. Loftus. And can you imagine, nowadays, every time we feel confused, we feel depressed, we feel pressured, and we try to seeking information online. And there are so many people on the internet are using the shell of psychology, speak some words of fear mongers, and actually mislead people into false memory. What going to happen to our life? And that's something I think everybody should be aware and uh, think about. And some people may say, okay, to prevent those false memory, let me just write things down right after something happens. So I will not have a false memory. The Elizabeth also are also very negative on that thought. Because use a day-to-day -day term, our memory actually happens in three stages. We record something, we maintain our brain, and we recall them later on. When you write it down, it only can shorten the time of maintaining our brain. But sometimes our false memory was created when we record something. For example, in one experiment of Elizabeth, they show a picture of a car was getting the car accident. By only tell people the difference with one word, it can create 10% more false memory. They ask the first group of people, oh, did you recall there's a shattered glass on the floor when two cars hit each other compared to when you saw shattered glass on the floor when two cars are smashed to each other? The second group of people report 10% higher chance they saw there's a shattered glass. Even then, there's no glass whatsoever. And that there is so much more interesting and mysterious scientific finding of memory, and even include group memory, for example, the Mandela effect. And if we have time in future, we will cover how a group of people memory was altered. And I'm sure lots of people after listen all of this thing by memory, you feel more confused than liberated. And that's exactly how I feel in the beginning when I finished learning about Elizabeth's work. But at least that we know in future, if we ever get into a situation like this, we have a one more tool on our tool bill, one more scientific assumption that we can solve our confusion. That's all for today's video. I really hope you learned something from today. My name is Paul. I see you next time. Bye.